Since the moment I started working at this restaurant six months ago, the alleyway behind the restaurant has always given me an uncomfortable feeling. To get a layout of this restaurant, it's located in the middle of the downtown, five minutes from the Mexico-US border. Since we're located in the tip of Texas in the Rio Grande Valley, the alley itself is not located right behind the establishment. You must walk past its patio and then our garage until you reach the side back door that you have to prop open as the door locks behind you once it's closed. During the day, I'll usually see people walking back and forth across the alley when I go to take out the trash. It's typically a safe location, though it is also prominent for its homeless population. They're usually harmless despite a few that are noticeably mentally ill. My colleagues have even gotten to know a few and have given leftovers whenever possible. I work as a part of the kitchen staff at this restaurant, and most of the time will work past 10pm. At night, my boss usually never lets the woman take out the trash just to be safe. Especially a petite, 5 foot Hispanic, 28 year old female. Anyway, since the quarantine started, our kitchen staff has become quite small. So I'll usually help take out the trash with one of the other men working. This night was pretty slow and my fellow co-workers and I were encouraged to clean up and leave early. At around a quarter to ten, I decided to get two of these slightly full trash bags and take them out back myself, assuming somebody would see me and take the other two after me. As I walked past the patio to the garage, my gut began to fluster. I got to the back door and paused. Maybe you should wait, I told myself, but the smell from the bags was nauseating. I pushed the door and propped it open with a brick that we usually kept nearby. The alley was dark and silent and the air felt menacing. The only light illuminating was from the bulb above the door. I walked quickly to the bins and lifted up the top and dumped the trash. And then slowly a man stood up from the other side of the dumpster. He wasn't very big but he looked a lot older. He was sweating and his demeanor seemed agitated. He must have been crouching and waiting for some time. I jumped back. The man looked at me, eyeing me, as my steps moved backward. He shook his head, motioning for me to stop. He was far too close for me to outrun him. I looked at his bushy dark brows and dark eyes, but it was so dark that I couldn't see most of him. His clothes didn't look homeless, but I still assumed he was since it's common for them to be out there at this hour usually waiting for food. I told him that I didn't have any leftovers, but he shook his head again and took out a medium sized knife. My eyes widened as I took in a breath. The following exchange took place in Spanish, but I'll translate. I don't have my purse, I was working. I'm still working. Just come with me, he said, using his knife as a pointer. My mouth grimaced. Having no idea where this small amount of courage came from, I said. My friend's coming out right now with the rest of the trash. Now, come now, he said more hurriedly and stepped closer and I stepped back again, speaking again with a little more tenacity. They all saw me come over here. There's more trash and he's coming right now. He's outside right now. I just need to yell. You are not going to scream. I'll gut you. I don't know what came over me, but I replied with, Watch me. We looked at each other, daring each other. And then we both heard footsteps coming from inside the garage. And he ran past me. I stood there breathing again. I didn't even know I was holding my breath. I turned to see my friend John come out of the door. We're almost done over. He stopped after seeing my face. What happened? I explained everything as tears ran down my face. My friend decided to run down the alley to try to catch him, even though I told him not to and that he's gone by now. 
It was about five minutes until he came back. John relayed to me that no one was around except for some homeless guys that we were familiar with. He asked them if they saw anyone running from the alleyway, and they said yeah, but they didn't recognize the man, and he took off in the opposite direction towards the border. John took me back inside and told our boss what had happened. They called the cops whose station was pretty close by. They sent someone to patrol the area and gather a description from me which I gave. My boss let me leave early and John walked me to my car. He told me that it's too bad we don't have a camera back there. It would have been cool to see how I had handled the guy. I smiled slightly, but my stomach was still in knots. He looked at me and apologized. I moved my hand to stop him and told him that I'll be fine. Unfortunately, I still work there, but I've been excused from trash duty from now on. Obviously, they never found him. I don't want to think about what would have happened to me if I was more complicit. Something gave me the courage to argue back to him. And thank goodness that my friend came out just in time. I was 20 years old at the time and I was working at a Chinese fast food place in the mall. I don't know if any of you have ever wondered, but all the restaurants at a mall's food court are connected by a long hallway behind them that only mall employees are allowed access to. Due to only workers going through there, and for it being hidden, you can imagine that the place is pretty solitary. This is important because this is where the events took place. Now, onto the story. There was a cook in this restaurant. For privacy's sake, I'll refer to as Greg. Greg was Chinese and didn't speak Spanish, my native language, nor English, only Mandarin. He only understood certain words in Spanish like rice, noodles, chicken, and other food items that he cooked so that, when we yelled them into the kitchen, he knew what to bring out. Also, I don't know how old he was, but he was easily over 60. So Greg, despite the language barrier, was a very bubbly person. Ever since I started working there, I noticed how he always made silly noises when he came up front to deliver his food and all the other girls would laugh. He generally seemed very sweet and friendly, and I never heard any of the girls complain about him at all. For all I could tell, he was just friendly with everyone and harmless. With time, as I stopped being the new girl, Greg would become more comfortable around me too, and make beep beep noises when he came to the front to deliver food as his way of asking me to step out of the way for him. It was actually kind of hilariously cute, and all my other co-workers, like I said, found him pretty harmless, so I began to feel comfortable around him too. A couple of months into the job, I was already familiar with everyone in the staff, Greg included, so I would always wave hello or goodbye to him and he would give me a smile and a wave back. I never thought anything weird of our interactions because they were the same with everyone else that he had interacted with. That was until one day. I was getting back to my shift after my break. I pushed through the employee door to enter the long hallway I had mentioned earlier. You could hear noises from the other workers inside their respective restaurants, but no one was really outside in the hallway. As I was walking towards the restaurant that I worked at, I saw that Greg was just then getting out for his break. He immediately smiled and said my name in the thick accent he always said it with, and I smiled back at him. I didn't feel threatened at all because, like I probably mentioned a million times by now, he had never given me a reason to feel threatened. He's still smiling at me, standing in front of the entrance to my job so I couldn't really just walk past him. Just as I was nearing him, he extends his arms, basically asking me for a hug. I had seen him hug other girls before, so again, I thought nothing of it and I went in for the hug. Call me naive. 
At first, it was all fine and dandy, but my shift was about to start, so I had to go. He had been hugging me for a bit too long as well, so not only was I getting antsy, but also uncomfortable. I broke the hug and I tried to push him back gently, signaling to him that I needed to go. And this is when I began to panic. You see, when I tried to push him away, he actually held me tighter and he wouldn't let go. I was confused, so I tried to push against him again, this time a bit more obviously. But he held on even more, pressing me against him. This is when I realized how naive I was, and it caused me to make a huge mistake. I turned my head to glare at him, but the moment I did, he leaned down as if expecting me to look and he tried to kiss me. Okay, now I was really freaking out because this was the first time someone tried to come at me, so aggressively, and he didn't speak any of the languages that I spoke, so... I didn't know how to tell him to let go of me other than his actions. And before you yell at me for not screaming, at the time I was so shocked that I didn't even think of it. I kind of shut down on that department, and instead I tried to figure out a way to make him let go. All this time, as I'm thinking what the heck to do, he's still trying to kiss me, keeping me in place no matter how much I struggled and actively following my head with his lips to try to plant one on me. It didn't matter if we didn't speak the same language. I think it was obvious that I wasn't comfortable, so I can say that he didn't know what he was doing. It was clear that he wasn't going to let go of me until I kissed him, so I did what I first thought of. I stopped moving my head and somehow managed to gather enough courage to look him right in the eye. I saw him lean in again from my lips, and I pretended I was going to let him kiss me. And then literally, at the last second, I turned my head to the side to try and make him kiss my cheek instead. It sort of worked, but I wasn't fast enough, for I still felt his lips peck the corner of my mouth. I felt disgusted, but at least it wasn't as he had wanted it. Just as I had hoped, as soon as he had planted one on me, he broke the hug, holding me at arm's length and gave me this huge grin. He then patted my shoulder before finally letting me go and walking away. I stood there shaken, not really knowing what to do. Eventually, I went back to work, but my coworkers asked me if I was okay since apparently I was pale as paper and my arms couldn't stop shaking. I just shrugged them off. I never reported this to my boss, nor did I say anything to my coworkers, partly because I thought this chef was family, and they would fire me rather than him, but mostly because I was stupid. However, I did avoid him at all costs for the remaining time that I worked there, and never treated him the same. I also never went alone to the kitchen nor entered the hallway until it was literally a minute for me to clock in. Eventually, I quit and never returned to that place. I heard he also quit not long after I had. Well, whatever the case, good riddance. I moved to Sandbach in Cheshire, England around 3 or 4 years ago with an axe. Him and I had broken up by this point and we were just friends in the house that we rented and everything was great. We weren't hostile towards each other and found out that we were better friends than in a relationship. I started going out to the bars and local shops to make friends and to see if anyone was as lonely as me by this point. I had moved from Chelsea, London to be with my ex and I didn't know anyone there. This was when I met Craig. Him and I became best friends quickly. He was a little odd, had family in the area, and his own flat, etc. So my ex moved away back with his family, and I couldn't afford the rent of my own. So Craig and I rented our own house in Worcester, where his dad lived. His dad was about a five minute drive away from the house that we had settled at. 
Ma'am and I were just best friends. We didn't do anything romantically, sexually. Andy always had a few poor girls in tow. He would tell each of them that they were the one for him, that he loved them, etc. He had around seven girls on the go at one point. I started seeing this guy, Jay. He would stay over a few times and would eventually become my boyfriend. Craig hated it. We would argue about him, the fact that why he should care anyway. Him and I were only best friends and he needed to stay out of my dating life. It was then things got physical. One night, Craig literally got on top of me in my room, put his knees on my arms and started to strangle me. He was saying things like, where is he now? And I honestly thought I was going to die. My brain switched to my mom who was four to five hours away. and She would never know or would have to come identify the body of her only child. I don't know what it was, but I managed to kick Craig and I ran. He had double locked the front door. He had hidden my bag and had smashed my new iPhone that I had gotten for my parents for my birthday. I was literally running down the stairs with him in tow, yelling how he's going to kill me. I knew the back door was open from him having a smoke earlier, and there was a garden gate. All I needed to do was open that door. I ran for it, opened it, and made it. The next thing, I am out on the street in short shorts and a pajama top barefoot. I just ran. I ran for a good half an hour towards town and used a payphone to call 999. And the police picked me up. I couldn't get back into the house as Craig had my door key. I told them all the story. They took me to the station and had to unlock it as if it was past one in the morning by now. They took photos of my neck that had bruising in my head that was bleeding, where he had smashed me into the kitchen wall earlier. I had to sit in a patrol car to go to my house and they picked Craig up. He was out on the street looking for me. I had to point him out and say, that's him to them. He said that he was looking out for me as he was worried for me. I don't think that's true. I think he was out looking for me to silence me so I wouldn't tell anyone. They arrested him and God told he would stay in his cell overnight. And a policeman let me into my house as they used the key Craig had. While I was in the house alone, I gathered my things. I had left my laptop, some clothes, shoes, and makeup in the garage. I thought I could easily replace them and I just wanted to get away and it was so worried he would come back any second through the front door. I had no purse and no money, no phone. My parents lived five hours away. Thankfully, I don't know why, but I had the sense to hide my car keys in my bra earlier that evening. I got into my car and drove to Morrison's petrol station. I was bleeding from my head, no shoes on and bruised. I broke down there and used their phone to call my mom. At first, she was annoyed that I had woken her up, but then I explained everything to her. She ended up putting 200 in the petrol cashier's account for me to fill my car up, get some food and a hot drink to calm down. I then drove to my parents. I later got told through friends of a friend that Craig got released in the morning, as it was his word against mine, and he smashed my laptop up when he found out that I wasn't at home anymore. Whatever. My stuff got replaced and I'm now with an amazing guy who treats me like a queen. Sometimes I get flashbacks of that night where I truly believe I could have died. As for Craig, I blocked him, deleted everything to do with his family and him, changed my number and even broke off friendships with friends that knew me and him. Please, let's never meet again, Craig, because this time, I'll be ready for you. So, I want to start off by saying that I still work for this company, and I still have anxiety every time I go into work. The company is huge, one of the biggest names in the world. For privacy purposes, I'm going to call it the Big Cheese or Big C. 
I also want to mention that I have crippling social anxiety. I credit to being homeschooled most of my life. This will make more sense later. Well, September of last year I was fresh out of high school and looking for work. I needed this job immediately because I was living with my significant other and we were barely getting by. My father and my grandfather both either work or worked for this company for a long period of time, and it is something that garnered a lot of respect in my family. So of course, I was thrilled when I got my first interview. It went great and I was all set to start training, which involved a few classes and on-the-job training. The classes were awkward to say the least, but nonetheless informative. Well, after the classes, we had our first task, join a group of fellow trainees and tour the work environment. This is when I first met the creepy coworker. He was in the very back of my group, seemed a little shy and didn't really talk to the rest of the group, unless he was trying to make an awkward joke to join in. At first, I just kind of felt bad for him. He seemed harmless, but definitely awkward and out of the loop. Knowing as much as I did going into the company, I made the effort to inform him and keep him updated with what the trainers were asking of us. He just seemed so lost and confused. I thought I was doing a good thing by helping him out. Even my significant other thought so at the time. The training went by without any hiccups and soon we were given the location of where we would start out. Ironically enough, the only person that I'd gotten to know the creepy co-worker, had the same area that I did. Realizing that we would start out together and both didn't know anyone, we decided to exchange phone numbers. This was so that we could both meet up the next week, the starting day, so we wouldn't get lost. And I thought nothing of this when he asked for my number, and just assumed it was more because he was nervous and didn't know anyone beside me. Boy, did I live to regret that. The first day of training, we met up at basically a flagpole so that we could wait for our on-the-job trainer, Christy. When we got off the employee shuttle, he started texting me asking where I was. I was in the smoking section a little ways away, killing my fears with a cigarette. I texted back telling him where I was and he asked if he could join. I didn't like how nervous I felt, so I wasn't very comfortable with anyone joining me during this time of reprieve. But I saw him coming over anyways, so I scooted over to make room on the bench. This didn't matter, because apparently he was going to sit as close as possible to me anyways. I hate touch or people being in my personal bubble, being a victim of other trauma. Touch was something only people very close to me had permission to do. A creepy coworker then proceeded to ask me if he could bomb a cigarette, and I'm not good at saying no, so I gave him one. After he lit up, he handed me my lighter, that I didn't even notice he took from the top of my bag back to me. Again, I just kind of ignored the unwarranted invasion of my space. We talked since we had about 30 minutes to kill, and we talked about the normal stuff like, how do you feel about the company? Where do you want to end up in it? I noticed that he was wearing tattoo covering sleeves and so I asked him about his tattoos. He pulled down the sleeves and started going over almost each and every one. All had something to do with either a love interest or something geeky. I listened out of mild curiosity but quickly got uncomfortable when he started pulling out his phone to show me pictures of ones that he drew. I was uncomfortable because he kept showing me pictures of himself as well. Mostly pictures of him shirtless, and I didn't really find that appropriate. He mentioned he was a Marine and that he had gained too much weight after his last tour. I apologized out of sympathy, but suggested that it was nothing to be ashamed of. Unfortunately, after that, he kept smiling at me in a way I deemed to be admiration. I had seen this look from my fiancé, so I knew somewhere I had effed up. I quickly turned the conversation to more appropriate stuff like music taste. He seemed interested in what music I liked a little too much, and decided that he should make me a playlist. I said it really wasn't necessary, but he insisted. Later into that very day during training, 
He kept purposely doing kind things, like taking heavy boxes from my hands, or taking the odd jobs he deemed too grueling for a lady. I was a little annoyed but mostly just glad most of the jobs meant that he would have to go to a different area and give me some space. He would always find a way back to appear beside me and scare me. I hate being scared, and he laughed it off every time. I was more than uncomfortable at this point, and a nervousness had settled in the pit of my stomach. At the end of the night, after we had been sent to go home and come back the next day, he decided to walk me out. We would walk back through the maze my workplace actually is, all the way to the employee costume center or lockers. It was there that we had gotten our work costumes and stored our regular clothing in lockers. Well, I was having trouble remembering the combination and couldn't find the little slip of paper that told me it. A creepy coworker came up and smirked to me, seemingly waiting for me to finish up. I thought that he had left by this point, so I wasn't expecting him to show up. After a few tries, he reached over and put the combination on my lock in for me. This was a serious red flag for me. He had already memorized my combination, and now I felt as though my privacy was completely gone. Again, I'm awkward and unsure of what to do in any situation like this, so I thanked him but suggested that he let me figure it out next time. I was hoping he would so that he would forget my combination. Remember this for later. After changing back into my regular clothes in the girl's locker room, I came out and he was still waiting for me. I asked him why he had waited when he could have just gotten home sooner, to which he replied, Because I'm a gentleman and a lady should be walked to her car so she can be kept safe. I told him that my significant other was waiting to pick me up. He asked where and I told him, down the street like an idiot. I still don't know why I complied with this creep as much as I did, but I had never been in a situation like this one. He told me that it was too far for me to walk and that it wasn't safe, so he offered to drive me over to my significant other's car. Due to how tired I was and how much I ached from the day, I didn't have much strength to argue. I mean, he was creepy, but nice. I chalked up the creepiness to him just being awkward. So, without anything else weird happening, he took me to my significant other, whom I had been texting the entire time, just to let him know where I was and what was going on. I had a deep gut feeling that I should text him everything I knew about the guy, and so I did. When we pulled up, I immediately got out of the car. My boyfriend sat there leaning against the car with his arms crossed. He wasn't very happy about him giving me a ride, but nonetheless thanked the creepy coworker for getting me over to him safely. The coworker nodded, seeming to smirk at my boyfriend the whole time. This is when my boyfriend first got a bad feeling about this guy. So, we got home and my boyfriend warned me about the guy, telling me that he wasn't getting a good vibe from the creepy coworker. It was not even three minutes after that, I got a text from the coworker. He started sending me songs and memes and telling me things like, I really feel like you get me. Now, I was uh, deeply concerned. What the hell did I get myself into? And why did I have to be so dang nice to people? The following day at work, I was on the last day of training, and I had a massive panic attack. I have a chronic illness, and the situation ended with none of my managers listening to me when I told them that the pain doesn't last and it comes and goes. They proceeded to rush me to the emergency room, of course, the customers were quick to take out their phones and film the whole thing. It was one of the worst experiences of my life, but what happens next is worse. I received about 20 text messages from the creepy coworker asking me how I was. At this point, I was done and I just didn't respond. After a few random memes, he started texting me that he was drunk and thinking about not going home to his wife. This was the first time he had ever mentioned to me he even had a wife. I was dumbfounded. Why was he so concerned about me when he had someone he obviously loved enough to marry? I didn't respond and I went to bed. In the morning, I woke up to my boyfriend looking at my phone in anger. 
my heart sank and I can only imagine what creepy co-worker it's at now. My boyfriend showed me the only text I had gotten since the night before. It was from his wife texting me from his phone. She wrote me a message explaining that creepy coworker had a problem getting attached to women. She warned me that I should stay away from him, and then told me her name. My name. It was after that she had explained my name was a thing for him. Of all of his exes had the same name. Now at this point, my boyfriend is telling me not to go back to this job, that it wasn't worth it. But that's not me. I wasn't going to let this one creep ruin this opportunity for me. This job meant the world to me, and I never wanted to let it go. So I told him if this continues that I would go to HR. But in all honesty, I didn't really want to go to HR. I was the new girl. I didn't want the first month on the job to be me fighting a harassment case. Biting my nails the whole way I went to work, suddenly creepy coworker wasn't hovering anymore. I thought this might have been him being embarrassed. I was pretty convinced I wasn't going to have a problem after that. Big mistake. On my lunch break, he made sure to go on his lunch early and come find me. His normally enthusiastic attitude was gone. Replaced by what felt like anger. I was scared. He came up to me and let me know that his wife was full of crap and just angry because he was divorcing her. At this point, I didn't want anything to do with him, so I kept quiet hoping that he would take the hint. Nope. He told me he had a gift for me and that he would give it to me after the shift, quickly walking away before I could respond. After my shift, I go outside the work area to the lockers. I had waited for an extra hour and a half, even taking a closing position from a coworker, just so that he would go home before me. Well, my lock wasn't locked all the way and I was now freaked out. I opened the locker to grab my bag and go, but I noticed it. A rolled up piece of drawing paper. I know what kind it was because I myself am an artist. Unrolling it. It was a naked girl. A naked girl that resembled my video game character on World of Warcraft. I had briefly mentioned my WoW addiction to my group on the first group training day. I didn't even realize that he had heard any of that, much less memorized the information. Suddenly he walks up even though he should be long gone by then, and he confronts me. He asked me if I liked it, and because he seemed angry, I said yes. I suggested that he didn't do it anymore as my boyfriend wouldn't like this kind of gift at all. He rolled his eyes and playfully giggled at me like I was joking with him. I wasn't. Not only did he follow me the whole way out to the work grounds, he got on the employee shuttle that I got on to have witnesses. He sat right next to me, leaning on me. I felt like a deer in headlights, mentally begging someone to suggest that he shouldn't be that close to me. But no one paid any attention. Instead, I spent the whole drive trying to get this man to pull his arm off of my shoulders. I felt nauseated and my head was spinning. After we got off, I practically dashed off the bus and ran to my boyfriend who parked the car at the entrance to the employee parking zone. I got in the car and told him to go. He took off and I started crying. I told my boyfriend what had happened and he was upset. He wanted to turn around and confront the creepy coworker, but I talked him out of it through tears. I promised that I would talk to my managers after that. Well, I kept looking for the right time to pull a manager aside, but never got the chance the next night I went in. Now, creepy coworker's attitude did another 180, and he was extremely weirdly playful. And then he crossed the final line. He grabbed my butt where customers could easily see him. My coworkers kind of laughed and thought it was a game, because this time I was pissed and pushed to my limit. I went after him and legitimately punched him in the butt and shouted in his face. How do you like that, huh? Seething, he seemed unfazed by my anger. Instead, he laughed it off and he winked at me. I went down into the basement for the employee bathroom and quickly threw up the contents of my stomach. I cried in the stall, praying to God that this would stop. I quickly made an excuse, using my chronic illness and I went home. 
So fast forward a few weeks, and he had completely swapped out his shift so that he wouldn't work with me. I felt like I had won the battle. I sent a message and he realized that he had crossed boundaries. Until the night before Christmas Eve, I had a terrible feeling as my boyfriend was driving me to work that night. I mean, I felt gross. I got to work and he was there, flirting with other girls, suddenly having this big ego that I had never seen him display before. Like I said when I met him, he was shy and awkward. It's like his personality flipped every time that I had to see him. I never knew which side of CC I was going to get. That night, he actually stomped off as all the other co-workers, including myself, closed the joint. We were scrubbing the floors like normal and he didn't see him altogether. And so he clocked out early and I relaxed. I figured he had gotten in trouble since one of our four managers seemed to be upset that he had clocked out without permission. I was there extra late. The evening festivities were done with for the night and my zone was pretty much closed off from customers. And so I walked through the massive property that is my work to get to the street. I had started taking new ways to meet my boyfriend who picked me up, just so I couldn't be followed. This time, I was going to walk straight out of the grounds and onto the street where the bus stops were, and my boyfriend would be waiting at the curb. I was about halfway through my approximately 12 minute walk, and I was in a dark area. Out of nowhere, as I'm sure you've already guessed, creepy coworker shows up. He starts yelling my name and following me from behind. I pretend to not notice and walk faster. He yells my name again and seems angrier, and so I sprint for it. I sprint all the way to cross the shuttle zone and end up crashing into someone's chest. Thank God it was actually my boyfriend who had a really bad feeling and wanted to be as close to my work exit as possible. I look back and creepy coworker got on a shuttle but was staring from the window, smiling like a Cheshire cat the whole time. Never in my life had I been so terrified. After that, the next night was Christmas Eve and I was supposed to work, but I just knew if I went in, something bad was going to happen to me. So, crying the whole time because I knew I had earned a bunch of points for calling out to avoid him, I cried asking the lady on the phone if I was going to get fired and she said she honestly couldn't say. I respected that but knew I wasn't done. I wasn't going to let this creep make me lose my job that I had worked so hard to get. Even changing my appearance to fit their strict standards. No, so I wrote to the only person I could think of. My trainer, Christy. She was a lead and she is the kindest girl you would ever meet. She had a heart of gold. You just knew being her friend meant that you would have a trusted confidant for life. I told her everything. I sent her these screenshots of the text messages he sent to me. I finally told someone with an ounce of leadership that I was scared to go to work. Immediately she responded and asked if she could tell the managers. Even though I was incredibly nervous, I told her yes. The next day I was pulled in, and God bless my ex-manager Christopher, because he was shocked at everything that had happened to me, and quickly helped me write a report for HR. He had led me through the steps and even changed the schedule so I wouldn't work with a creepy coworker unless he specifically traded shifts. Two months go by, and I am well acquainted with the responsibilities for my work at this point, and I'm comfortable, but of course, there's no stopping a stalker. He had traded his shift and was working the night shift with me. He was angry every time he looked at me, and I avoided him at all costs. And then around halfway through my shift, I'm down in the basement coming back from the restroom. I'm walking up the steps that lead back to my work area, and then I feel someone behind me. Before I could even think a clear thought, I was pushed against the wall, a hand beside my head. He leans in and says, You should smile more. And then the guy chuckles and walks away. I feel pretty hysterical at this point and I run to the closest lead, crying and trying to explain what happened. It was at this point that my manager Christopher, pissed off that HR was taking so long to investigate my case, went to them to speed it up. Well, after four months of an interview process with HR, finally the case was resolved and not only was he let go, but I was doing really well in my job finally. 
nothing to worry me and to not paying attention to my duties. The creepy coworker has left me alone ever since, but sometimes I get random friend requests from guys with no pictures and always similar names. Always close to his name.